It's the topic that seemingly won't go away, but it's the topic that is the gift that keeps on giving, Deflategate. And Dave Wedge is here. He has co-written a book with Casey Sherman. The official title is 12, The Inside Story of Tom Brady's Fight for Redemption. Thanks for coming in tonight. Sure, thanks for having me, Tom. This has, once again, captured the region by storm, and I'm sure that's no surprise to you. No, you know, Casey and I, it's our third book together, and we were thinking about doing a story about the um, kind of the dark side of the NFL, all these gates, you know, Bounty Gate, Spy Gate, uh, Bully Gate, all that, and we tabled it, and then the Super Bowl happened. So once that Falcon Super Bowl happened, we, we talked to each other and we said, hey, well, I guess we got our ending. My number one question going in is, how do you get people to talk about a subject that they clearly don't want to talk about? Well, we were fortunate that uh, we got some access to the NFLPA and Tom Brady's lawyers, uh, Demora Smith and Heather McPhee, and they were more than happy to talk about this. In fact, they reached out to us to work on this book. And um, besides that, you know, Casey and I have been around for a long time. We've been investigative journalists for over 20 years each, so we were able to get a lot of access to people that knew a lot of things, and I think we have a lot of fresh information in there that people are going to like to read. As you pieced it all together, what were some of the themes that came to the surface for you? As you, you're uh, bringing all these facts and you're in your head you're thinking what well we just wanted to tell a great story first of all we think that this particular 18 month period of, of the Patriots from Deflategate until the uh, Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl is going to go down in history is really the most pivotal moment in franchise history where you know Spygate was crazy and all that but that was about Belichick and that was about the organization Deflategate was right on Tom Brady he was labeled a cheater and the story about how he overcame that and everyone supported him and he came back on that scorched earth season that he had and then won the greatest Super Bowl really ever played we just think it's it's made for Hollywood, frankly, and, and that's where we're going with it. So. Really? So what are your thoughts about pursuing this as a possible movie? Well, it's already in the works. I mean, uh, we're working with the same folks that uh, did our last book, which was uh, Boston Strong, which was made in the movie Patriot's Day with Mark Wahlberg, and they also wrote uh, The Finest Hours and produced that, which was a Disney movie, which was mm -hmm. my co-author Casey Sherman's book before Boston Strong. Work with that same team, and you know they make great movies. They have a great angle on the story, and we think it'll make a great movie. Let's talk about Tom specifically sure. and how he reacted to everything that happened. And the one uh, excerpt that has really been put out there more than the other was when Robert Kraft gave up the fight, and Tom's reaction to that with Demora Smith. That encapsulates how he felt about being left out on an island but is that generally the feeling that Tom felt that he was sort of left to swim upstream by himself here I think it's pretty clear at that point it was you know I think a lot of those relationships have been mended since especially with Kraft um, but at that moment you know remember Tom Brady um, had this bombshell dropped on him after that Colts game where he was suddenly accused of being a cheater four months go by and Tom's planning on fighting this thing and all of a sudden his owner suddenly drops the appeal. Tom Brady learned about that from the press conference like we mm -hmm. all did. The reaction is what we have there in the book. So, yeah, I mean, I think he was he he felt like he was on an island, but he had the union. And remember, Tom was always a great union representative for his entire career. When the new when the union needed Tom, he was there for them. So, when he needed the union, the union was there for him. We talked about the relationship between Tom and Robert Kraft. But as you were writing the book, we're seeing a relationship between Tom and Bill Belichick that's arguably been disintegrating, at least at a personal level. Do you feel that this was the first stone that sort of sent that snowball down the hill and it put this going in a negative direction between those two? I, I do. I think that a lot of the uh, fractures that we're seeing in Foxborough right now can be traced to what happened with Deflategate. Again, to your point, you know, Tom Brady had always been the good company man and, and did everything the Patriot way. Deflategate happens, and you know, Bill Belichick had that press conference and he said, Hey, go ask Tom. That was very uncharacteristic of Bill Belichick, and, I, and I, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. And I think, you know, that was kind of the start of it. I think that a lot of the stuff with Alex Guerrero that we're seeing exacerbated that relationship and the way that it is right now. But again, I think it's. It's been healed in a lot of ways, and at the end of the day, these three guys behind us on the screen are the best in the business, and when it comes time for football and business, they take care of it. What I'm waiting for is the day, and someday, I don't know when, it's going to happen. We're going to hear from McNally. We're going to hear from Jastrzemski, and question number one, I'm kind of surprised we haven't yet. What's your reaction to that, that I, we haven't? I agree 100%. And, you know, we made every effort to get those guys, and I'd love to talk to them still. Uh, we can always add a chapter or a prologue. I mean, they have some information uh, to talk about. You know, they, they, they disappeared pretty quickly, and 
when the whole thing went away after the Wells report, they were never heard from again. So it's, it is suspect. It's a classic case of just you know taking one for the team, it seems, right? And they're, the team saying, hey, shut your mouth. You don't have to say a word. We've got your back in this regard. And anything you say is only going to flame it up again. It does seem that way. And, and another big uh, piece of the book that came out this week, you may have seen, is that uh, there was an offer on the table at one point where Tom Brady could pay a million dollar fine. But there was a caveat. Roger Goodell said, pay the fine, no suspension, but you have to throw these two guys under the bus, basically publicly acknowledge that they tampered with the balls, and Tom refused to do that. So I think that's telling as well. You said that when you spoke with Tom, and you did confirm with us that you did speak with Tom, not specifically about the Flakegate, were you able to glean from him, or, or maybe backdoor the information or the questioning to him about how he felt, and did he feel redemption at the end of that season when they did beat the Falcons? What were your lessons that you learned about how Tom viewed that season? Yeah, he did talk about it a little bit in the book, and you know, there's some good quotes in there from him where he talks about you know, I wasn't thinking that far ahead, but when you read between the lines of what he's saying, you could tell that it was some fuel for his for his fire. But remember as well, his mom was sick and his mom was going through cancer. So I think, you know, he had the most trying season of his life where he's being accused of a cheater. His mom's sick and he's in this, you know, this crazy Super Bowl. I think when that was all over, I think it was very overwhelming. And I think someday when Tom Brady does retire, who knows when that'll be, when he gets that yellow jacket in Canton, he's going to uh, look back on this season as kind of a watershed moment in his career. Do you think that when all said and done, this is going to tarnish Tom Brady's legacy? I think that the people that hate Tom Brady are going to use it forever to say, well, he deflated balls, he cheated. Well, Bill Belichick did Spygate, he cheated. But I think, you know, look, the, it, there were no deflated balls, and there was no Spygate in that Super Bowl when they came back down from 28 to 3. I think even the most ardent Tom Brady hater has to admit that they witnessed greatness in that game. It was perfection in that fourth quarter. And, you know, to come back like that, how can you put an asterisk next to that? Good stuff. Thanks for being Thanks, with us. Tom. Dave Wedge, Casey Sherman, they've penned the book 12, the inside story of Tom Brady's fight for redemption. You can get it right now at Amazon.com and countless bookstores all around the region.